Well, good morning and welcome to Health Talk here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX. I'm Paul Thomas and Bill Kearney is back with us in the studio in live form and I'm back in live form and we both were gone for a few weeks and here we are live again. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a little change of, uh, of climate. You were in the snow yeah. and I was in the tropics and uh, it was a, a wonderful time for both of us, I think. And uh, we... Uh, we took off uh, from uh, Sacramento, I think it was 13 hours between flying to L.A. and then flying to Papiete, Tahiti, and then getting on the ship, <clears throat> but had a wonderful time. We took all kinds of excursions through <clears throat> the French Polynesia Islands, and uh, one of our friends that had owned a resort in Morea uh, had just closed uh, their resort in February, and we kind of wanted to see them. and. Um, they were uh, had already closed, and the French had taken over uh, the motel. But it was a, a wonderful, relaxing time. We uh, went to six or eight different islands and uh, took an excursion on each one of those to uh, see what the life was like there. And it's pretty. Um, we're pretty lucky, you know. People that protest against the United States and and think that. Uh, uh, this is a terrible place to live. You ought to live in those countries. And uh, part of uh, one of the islands we were on, Huahini, uh, the, uh, if you have a child, you have to go to Papiete a month before you have that child uh, to uh, establish a residence there. So um, the country will pay for uh, the birth. If you don't do that and just have it at home, then all the costs... Uh, come to you in the same way with education. They can only go to the 11th grade, and then they have to go to Papiete, and, which is the capital of Tahiti, and, uh, and take further classes and be away from home, and it's quite expensive. So uh, when we go to different countries like that, we try to look at lifestyles and, um, you know, things, uh, and people are so happy with nothing, uh, you realize that uh, we have so much more than, uh, and, and these people are happy. They just want you to be family. They want you to be there, and it's just uh, uh, really kind of rewarding. But, um, and we're talking about health here, and, and health is uh, mostly covered uh, in the French Polynesian and uh, Tahiti by the government. And um, if it's anything other than what's on their formulary, then you have to pay for it, and these people don't make that much money. But uh, they're they're happy. They're happy where they are, and um, and they're they're wonderful people. But uh, I want I need to share some things uh, with our audience. We've been gone. I, in fact, I called. Uh, I got back way late on Tuesday night, Paul, and I called the studio to see uh, is is Paul. If I was here, yeah. I said no. He's up at the mountains, and yeah. we sure hope he's having fun. <laughs> and I said, well, that took some pressure off me because we didn't get back till early Wednesday oh, that's morning. Oh, that's the prep, yeah. So we had uh, taken some uh, measures and recorded yes. three shows before we left. Yep. But um, as uh, when I was gone, there was a uh, rather disturbing event that took place, and um, the only reason I'm talking about it is it affects a lot of our listeners, uh, all of the listeners. Um, uh, of no surprise, go to uh, other competitors of ours instead of uh, just to us. And one of our competitors uh, had um, some problems with the Drug Enforcement Agency, and uh, they came in in force uh, just before I left, and they spent several days there. And the um, result of that visit was uh, they were no longer able to fill uh, control substances of any kind, uh, Schedule Two, which are the opiates, and three, fours, and fives. So that license has been removed, uh, I, and I can't tell you how long. Uh, I've heard uh, up to three years, but I'm not sure. Anyway, when you go to get your uh, pain medication uh, from your pharmacy, if that was your pharmacy, and I'm sure you know, um, you will have to go someplace else. And because the Drug Enforcement Agency was so strict uh, with that, then anybody that's taking those prescriptions that are transferred uh, have to uh, undergo a, uh, a series of questions, uh, at least by our pharmacy, to make sure that we'll, we're within the guidelines of the law also. So uh, it's going to be a little inconvenient for you. 
Uh, if you're used to getting your, uh, your pain medications early or your sleeping pills early or your benzodiazepines like Xanax or Adafin early, <coughs> you're not going to be able to. And if you're used to getting a muscle relaxant and, um, and Ativan or Xanax and uh, your pain medication, you're not going to be able to. Uh, the federal government says that is a cocktail that's too dangerous and it's not to be dispensed, uh, and at least the physician has to start tapering you off that medication. So every prescription comes to me. Uh, I, go, I put it through the Department of Justice uh, scanning system. Uh, I have an extra questionnaire that we uh, attach to the prescription before we ever fill it. <clears throat> and if you were getting the prescription early, we inform you that you can't get it early any more than one day early. Um, from now on. So um, these aren't new rules. These aren't new laws. They're just being enforced uh, rather stringently now. So we're also asking you if you bring your prescriptions to us to bring all of your prescriptions to us. Uh, most all of the prescriptions that are under the Controlled Substance Act uh, is at no profit whatsoever. Uh, we often uh, lose money on those prescriptions. And we're not here just to fill uh, pain medications. We're filling them because many people need them, uh, but they're going to have to comply with the opiate uh, restrictions. And you know the president's trying to get it so anybody caught selling opiates illegally will be uh, will have the death sentence. So this isn't anything that we look um, at and uh, don't have a big serious uh, attitude towards complying with the law. And we always have complied with the law. And we, uh, I just talked to the state board on Monday and I wanted to make sure that uh, what we were doing <clears throat> was uh, compliant with what the Drug Enforcement Agency had required because uh, we have a conflict of interest uh, with uh, the DEA regulations and the Board of Pharmacy regulations. And that regulation is that uh, we cannot let somebody endure um, any kind of uh, suffering by not able to get not not being able to get the medication, um, long-term suffering. So uh, that means um, if you were getting it early, you were taking them too quickly. You weren't taking them like the doctor prescribed. If you're not taking them like the doctor prescribed, we can't fill it for you. If the doctor writes on there fill early, we can't. Uh, observe that regulation. We have to fill it according to our records. If the doctor wants to rewrite the prescription to uh, the uh, directions that you're taking the medications. If it says one every six hours is needed for pain and you're taking it every four hours uh, and the doctor says fill it early, we still can't fill it early. Uh, I've had some very good friends uh, that were not used to um, uh, used to getting these medications uh, when it was convenient for them. Uh, when they were in town, when they went to the doctor's office, um, those uh, excuses now or those reasons to get them early uh, are not adequate. So uh, you need to know that uh, it's um, it, the doctor isn't God anymore when it comes to telling you to go ahead and give it to them. So we have to endure uh, the guidelines of the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Board of Pharmacy. And um, if the doctor wants you to take it early, he has to rewrite the prescription and say uh, the, the uh, directions on this pill is now uh, one every four hours instead of one every six hours, or it's as needed instead of uh, strictly uh, four times a day or six times a day. So it's going to, uh, you're going to see a little bit of a, uh, a backup at our pharmacies because uh, this is taking some time. You can imagine um, the pharmacies, uh, what the pharmacy that lost their license is uh, going through trying to get all these prescriptions transferred and for them to keep up with what's going on. So uh, it takes us some time to get those uh, prescriptions from uh, the original pharmacy, 
And uh, I don't want to confuse you now. I don't, I'm not telling you you can't get any prescriptions from that pharmacy. I'm telling you that you um, uh, cannot get any controlled substances. So that's anything like sleeping pills or uh, pain medications or muscle relaxants that are part of the, uh, 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 the standard for uh, people with back injuries that are controlled substances. And um, the, uh, the sleeping pills and the Ativan and Xanax and those kind of things, which we call <coughs> benzodiazepines, uh, they all fall under that same category, although uh, they don't require a new prescription every time uh, like the opiates do and the amphetamines do. Uh, and talking to the state board on Monday, they said they're going to include more and more substances under that uh, ruling. Uh, in order to protect themselves and in order to um, make sure that uh, everything's within the guidelines. The other thing that you may not have been asked and we may ask you is, have you ever taken any illicit drugs or substances? Uh, and if you say yes, then we will ask you if you want Narcan or Naloxone. Uh, and what does that mean? We're not accusing you of, um, of being a drug addict or uh, uh, doing anything uh, incorrectly, although if you tell us that you did, uh, we have to consult with you about naloxone. Naloxone is a reversal. It's an opiate uh, antagonist, and it uh, reverses. If you overdosed, uh, you would be uh, able to uh, bring yourself back, or somebody in your family would be able to bring yourself back instead of dying. Uh, by giving you the Narcan. <clears throat> That's a state law in, uh, in California. And uh, we don't have to ask you that drug if we run a profile and find out that you've been very compliant. Uh, when we run your profile through the Department of Justice, it gives us every pharmacy that you are getting a prescription from. It doesn't give us the illicit uh, places you are getting it, but everything that had to go through the Department of Justice, which is any controlled substance that requires a prescription, uh, we will have a record of. So uh, before we even address you about that, we will have ran a security check to make sure you're not getting it multiple places. And uh, many times you were getting the opiate one place and you were getting the benzodiazepine another place and you were getting a muscle relaxant another place and a sleeping pill another place. Uh, just so the pharmacy wouldn't be alert to the combination. But uh, that is just as illegal as, uh, and yes, you can find physicians that will write you for that combination, but uh, they won't be filled unless we get an extremely uh, good indication from a physician. If you're a hospice or if you go to a dentist uh, and get a small quantity, uh, normally uh, we that's fine within the guidelines. We're not looking for um, an opiate person that gets 12 uh, opiates at one time and then uh, two months later gets another 12. We're looking at people that repeatedly uh, get that prescription. I had one yesterday that uh, every two weeks um, this person would get the pain medication. And we also asked, have to ask you for a diagnosis. So uh, many times we will just get a number and we'll have to look that number up. And if you say that you just have arthritis or you have a pain in your knee or a pain in your back, it's not going to fly. Uh, it has to be a specified diagnosis. That's a federal ID number that can go in there and identify that uh, electronically and give a reason to be taking that medication. There are several people <clears throat> that have been on these medications for years and years. <clears throat> I had a person yesterday that had been on it for five years without an attempted dose reduction. And uh, I wrote a note on the prescription. The physician needs to um, make an effort to uh, have a reduction in the amount of opiate that this person takes. And uh, we needed to call the physician. And uh, as it was, we couldn't fill the prescription that we had uh, because it was exactly the same as it had been for the last three or four years. So we asked them to make an attempt to re reduce that prescription. Uh, many times we can get a hold of the physician, and the physician will tell us what's going on. 
and why uh, that is, there's been no attempt. And there might have been an attempt, and uh, we didn't know about it. And it didn't get, <coughs> excuse me, on the Department of Justice thing. So <coughs> I, I know that um, uh, the rumors are out there, and I know that uh, you're being told when you go in there that uh, something happened or they're out of the medication or uh, I, I don't know what they're telling you. But um, the truth is that they're not able to fill your prescription. Um, there's no inventory. Uh, that is an accurate statement because they pulled all the inventory out of the store that was related to those medications. So they may tell you they don't have it and they don't know when they will get it. And that's not a lie. Um, but it isn't uh, appealing to them or any pharmacy. This could happen to any of us. Uh, to uh, say, uh, no, we've lost our ability to <clears throat> dispense those medications for a term of, of so long, so we'll have to send you someplace else. So that's the bad news. <clears throat> the good news is that um, Shingrex, which is the new um, medication injection for shingles, uh, is being paid for by insurance companies now. Uh, some insurances have no copay. Uh, I can't, I've been overwhelmed with uh, trying to take care of this other issue, so I can't tell you uh, if Medicare pays for it or not. They, they didn't in the past. Uh, but if you have Medicare D insurance for prescriptions, uh, it is uh, being paid for. I got my second shot uh, just before I left, and my... Uh, uh, copay had gone down from 150 to 75, and then I've heard since I've gotten back that a lot of these insurances, uh, their copays are uh, relatively small. Uh, it costs 175 dollars, and um, and that's for one shot. The second shot also costs 175 dollars, and you can get that second shot anytime within two months after you received the first shot, up to six months after you received the first shot. So the, it is available uh, for us, and sometimes we may have uh, where the other Zostavax came in doses of 10 at a time. These come in single uh, doses that we have to reconstitute and uh, add together. And so uh, we're not getting, if we got 10 uh, bottles of that or 10 doses of that, which would be 20 bottles because there's a reconstituted pack too, uh, we would have um, $3,000 worth of inventory sitting there. So we uh, don't want to do that, uh, if at all possible. So we will catch up with the supply and demand uh, as people learn that they can bring this in. Now, if you've had Zostavax for shingles and it hasn't been six months, then you can't get um, the Shingrex, the new shot for shingles. Uh, you don't have to have a prescription. Uh, we uh, can uh, make the prescription up for you. But it has to be a six-month time period from when you got uh, the Zostavax, and there can't be an active virus in your system at this point. So uh, some guidelines uh, for you using it. If you uh, don't remember that and you want to just come in and ask us or give us a call, uh, we'd certainly be able to give you that information. Uh, the third thing is that uh, we have heard uh, through the literature that it could be, um, the side effects could be greater than you had with the Zostafax, even though this is an inactive vaccine uh, and it goes in the muscle. It doesn't go under the skin like the Zostafax did. Uh, but I took uh, the medication uh, just to find out uh, what the side effects would be, plus it had been over eight years since I'd had the Zostafax. And my arm was sore uh, for one day, maybe a day and a half, uh, but nothing that was uh, substantial to really uh, caution somebody about. We will tell you, however, when you get it, that you could expect some soreness uh, in the area, and, uh, and that might last for three days opposed to one day. But so far, we haven't had anybody that has. So um, if you have any questions, call 263-5252. Uh, and uh, give us a call about uh, uh, anything that you might uh, not be clear on. We'll be more than happy to give you that information. 
Well, I don't know how many of you uh, had the flu um, this past uh, three or four or five months, but many of you, uh, along with the cough. And, um, and now they say, and that was the type A uh, flu influenza. Now they say that uh, in the quick future, the, uh, the strain B is going to be circulating around. And so even though you had the flu uh, with type A and the immunization was for type A, or type A and B, it was more effective for type B. So if you've been immunized, uh, you should be okay. And I read an article last night that said, you still have plenty of time to get immunized. Well, uh, the unfortunate part about that is the uh, flu vaccine expired uh, in uh, April, so it won't be available uh, to take. And um, we have pulled it off the shelf and pulled it out of the refrigerator, and uh, it's um, uh, short acting now. So uh, it will be next year before we can get a different flu strain. So, um, but just be aware that the shot you already got may be more effective than uh, the one that caused the flu that you've already had this year. So uh, it is um, a strange year when it comes to what's happening out there and uh, as far as medicine goes. And, <clears throat> and we just have to be diligent, uh, keep up with uh, what we're doing and uh, have uh, best practices as far as uh, notifying you about uh, things I had a, a representative in for our, our wholesaler uh, yesterday, and I was telling her about this radio show, and she says, well, what do you talk about? <clears throat> I said, I talk about uh, things that I think people would like to hear about. I, I, I look online, uh, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, CNN Health, uh, every uh, the New York Times, <coughs> uh, anything that involves current news as far as health, uh, I try to relay and, and offer that information to you, and I try to offer it to you in a form that uh, you can understand. Uh, if I tell you a beta blocker or an ACE inhibitor or an angioretensin blocker does this or that, you won't have any idea what I'm talking about. Most people won't. Some will. We encourage people to know more and more about uh, their medical uh, uh, medications they take and why they take them. And, what they're taking them for, and we urge you to, uh, for 30 years, I've urged you to come in and bring every medicine that you take, including mail order and over-the-counter medications, and, um, and we'll look at them and see if they're current, make sure they're not duplications, uh, make sure that uh, you're still supposed to be taking them, or if it's not expired. We'll go through all that. It won't cost you anything. Uh, whether you come to us or not. And I've urged many, many people to take advantage of that opportunity. And I don't know if you think that uh, I, you don't want to do it because I'll think you're stupid or uh, heavens to Betsy, no. We're, uh, we just want to help you. And if we can help clarify uh, some of those things, uh, come in and, and let us do that. You may have to make an appointment. Uh, so I'll clear time uh, available for you to do that but you need to bring all the information you have. If you don't get it from us, then you need to bring a list of, of uh, all the medications that <clears throat> you've been prescribed and you're getting someplace else, uh, including over-the-counter medications. Um, it, this isn't uh, to try to steal you away from somebody else. This is just trying to uh, help you out. If we don't do that in today's society <clears throat> and you don't become uh, the person dependent on you getting good health care, uh, then we're going to fail about taking care of you because there's going to be less and less physicians and, um, and less and less pharmacies. Uh, you're seeing a big uh, push by uh, CVS to become um, uh, completely whole with their own PBM, with their own insurance company. They own Aetna now. They have um, uh, their own PBM with uh, Caremark, and uh, they have their own... Uh, pharmacy. So there's no middleman. We just had a drug that we filled, we filled in December for an HIV patient that uh, on after we'd reconciliated, after we're talking right now, we're talking the end of March, um, they took $720 away from us 
on what they call a DIR fee, and I, that it won't do me any good to d try to explain what that is, uh, because it should be illegal, uh, and it isn't. And these pharmacy benefit managers, like Caremark and uh, United Healthcare, um, they are able to pull uh, money out of um, a prescription after they've told you what they were going to pay, and then take another 75 or 80 percent out of it. <clears throat> and so at the end, we lost $720 on one prescription, <clears throat> $860 on another one. And between our two pharmacies, we lost over $100,000 in DIR fees. That was after they told us what they were going to pay us and what they ended up paying us after they took the DIR fees. So it becomes more challenging all the time to uh, uh, make your business profitable. And where you lose, as we did a, a year ago, we lost our compounding business because California decided to have a stricter state law on compounding than uh, the rest of the 50 states. And we also um, have uh, had to fill prescriptions now at a 90-day supply on maintenance medications instead of a 30-day supply and where the insurance companies allow it. And uh, that causes us to lose 66% uh, of our uh, Medicare D prescriptions uh, in a 90-day period. Uh, because we only fill it once instead of filling it three times. Uh, it may save you money. You may only have one copay. The copay may be identical to what uh, you're paying uh, every month times three, or it may be substantially less. Uh, either way, it's a better deal for you, uh, and it um, really uh, it becomes a little difficult uh, for us to find a niche in there where we can survive when we really don't know uh, how much we're going to be paying out. Um, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about why your allergies are worse at night. As our aging population continues to increase, we as healthcare providers and also family members have an added responsibility to take care of them. Hi, my name is Bill Kearney, pharmacist and owner of North Lake Medical Pharmacies in Lakeport. Our senior population brings us new issues as they continue to age. Our bodies change as we age, and they need a pharmacy that cares about their care. I had a lady come into our pharmacy the other day and asked if we still were a locally owned pharmacy. She was tired of the lack of compassion at the big chain pharmacy she was dealing with. When you become our customer, you will see our goal is to get to know our customer. We believe personalized attention combined with competitive prices are what people are looking for. So when you come into our pharmacies and our employees call you by name, don't be surprised, but feel how important you are to us. That's why our family-owned pharmacy has continued to exist this 38 years in Lakeport. North Lake Medical Pharmacies with two locations to serve you, on Hill Road East across from Sutter Lakeside Hospital and outside the Bruno Shop Smart in Lakeport. Attention Cobb community. Cobb Safe 2018 is Saturday, April 14th at the Cobb Mountain Elementary School. This is a community emergency preparedness event. Hear from county and state representatives. Get organized with your neighbors. Make a plan in case of an earthquake, fire, or other emergency. Sign up with South Lake Fire Safe Council Chipping Program. 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. at the Cobb Mountain Elementary School. This is Brock Falkenberg, Lake County Superintendent of Schools. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. We all have a role to play in supporting healthy child development. This year, I encourage people to take one of three simple steps. Mentor a child or a parent, advocate for policies that support children and families, or donate time, money, and resources to child-serving organizations. The good news is that most people are already involved in supporting children. Please join the Lake County Office of Education and the Lake County Children's Council and numerous partner agencies as we celebrate and support our Lake County children at the Children's Advocacy Walk and Festival. The Children's Advocacy Walk and Festival will take place at Library Park on Saturday, April 21st at 10 a.m. The first 100 people to register for the walk will receive a free t-shirt. More information on the event and how to register can be found at lakecoe.org. That's L-A-K-E-C-O-E dot O-R-G. We bring the community closer together, supporting business in every way. We're helping make your dreams come true, working hard for you. 
The Lake County Chamber of Commerce would like to recognize their member of the month, Tompkins Tax Consultants. John and Diane Tompkins have been serving Lake County since 1974 and have been a member of the Lake County Chamber of Commerce for 24 years. They provide services to many small businesses and individuals in Lake and Mendocino County. Their main office is located in Lucerne off Highway 20, and they also have a second satellite location in Lakeport at 576 Lakeport Boulevard. For more information, reach them at 274-1843. Lake County Chamber of Commerce, we're steady and strong. Help us shape the future. All right, Bill, we're back. Well, Paul, we went from uh, coughing and spitting and eyes watering from the flu and the cold, and uh, now it seems like it's worse the last few days. Allergies. It's allergies. Yeah. And <clears throat> with uh, the wind blowing and um, uh, everything going on with all this uh, warm weather and the new growth, we're way ahead of where we normally are with the blooms, and uh, so it, like clockwork, your uh, your seasonal allergies are are back. Um, the runny nose and sneezing and itching eyes uh, they weren't bad enough, so your allergy symptoms might make it a, a nearly impossible to sleep, which is what I went through last night. Um, but it's not just you, and it's not just in your head. Um, Lying down, you know, worsens congestion. So uh, gravity is not your friend when you're, it comes to your bedtime allergies. When you lie down and you just think about it, uh, everything in your nose starts dripping down your throat. And for a lot of us, that happens during the day. In fact, this radio show, if I don't take a decongestant before I come on, that's happening all the time, causing me to cough and <clears throat> clear my throat. And uh, that can lead to more or worse coughing and wheezing and difficult breathing uh, when you're standing upright. So uh, propping yourself up with some extra pillows might help that congestion uh, and that post-nasal drip uh, while you sleep. Um, you think your bedroom is uh, full of dust mites and mold. It really isn't. It's not that the pollen levels rise at night. They're actually the highest in the morning. We've always told you, you know, if you're athletic and you're really uh, having a problem with seasonal allergies, don't go out in the morning. Don't open up your window in the morning because they're the highest concentrated in the early morning. So you uh, may feel like that they feel worse at night because you're adding indoor triggers uh, into an older house or one that has water damage or uh, if uh, you've been one of the houses that burned partially and was soaked with water to keep it from burning, there's mold uh, uh, appearing. Well, Bedrooms actually are the worst place to be in, in the house. Um, the allergies you get exposed to outside, compounded by additional allergens on the inside, may make the symptoms worse. And you may want to revamp your bedroom uh, to rid the space as of many allergens as possible. Uh, ditch carpeting or vacuum it every day or twice a day. Uh, use dust mite covers on mattresses and box springs. Uh, and consider an air purifier. Uh, sleep with the windows closed to minimize how much pollen makes its way into your sleep sanctuary. <clears throat> you know, I do just the opposite. Uh, in the wintertime, even, I keep the, the slider open and keep the room really cold. Uh, in the summertime, it's worse. Uh, one thing that's good for us is I live uh, right above the lake, so I don't get as much of that as I would in the front lawn where I have all the oak trees and uh, floral products and everything. So also if your pet sleeps in your bed, uh, all of a sudden my wife has decided that she wants a pet. And I said, you have me. You know, what, <laughs> what, do you, what do you really need that, uh, I mean, I'm all loving, I'm cuddly, I, you know, I, you know, all the things a dog is. And, um, but pet dander accumulates on your carpet or, and on your uh, sheets and comforters. Um, they make for good uh, snuggle buddies, but uh, if you're allergic to your pet, sleeping bedside um, with each other isn't doing you any favors. And there's even pets that they say they are uh, hypoallergenic, meaning they don't cause you to have allergies, but they still have uh, some and they still cause some problems. But you could not get anybody 
If you try to get somebody that has allergies to walk in a field of hay uh, or grasses, they wouldn't do it. But if you wanted them to sleep with your dog, uh, they probably would. Uh, it's not the indoor allergens that's making your symptoms worse. It could be the pollen you unknowingly brought inside. And we've talked before about uh, lingering on your hair and your skin and your clothing. Uh, so you should take a shower uh, before you uh, put on clean PJs when outdoor allergies are giving you a hard time. Um, it, it's just uh, if you have more hair than I do, which is zero, uh, it gets in your hair substantially, and you put your hair uh, on the pillow, and then you put your nose on the pillow to sleep, and you are just aggravating uh, a situation that wouldn't be nearly as bad if you showered at night and didn't have um, that. And a lot of people shower, and they don't want to wash their hair because they've got to get up and go to work in the morning, and they don't want to go through all that. But, you know... Why do they get worse at night? It's besides the fact that all illnesses feel worse at night. I feel worse when I have the flu, when I come home and I'm tired uh, and I have uh, neuropathies and I have arthritis and it all seems to accumulate at night. Uh, and one of the reasons is it isn't really any worse, but when you're busy during the day, you're not thinking about uh, how bad you feel. You're thinking about what your mission is today and you want to get it accomplished. And um, so... When you get home and you're sitting down watching television or reading a book, um, you have a lot of opportunity to think about um, how badly you feel. And it seems like uh, we all get that message at night that we feel different. I have neuropathy really bad in my right hand. Uh, by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I can't write a check. I can't pick up a pen. Um, but I don't have that much pain until I get home at night. And I'll get home at night and just sit down uh, to watch the news or something and get severe pains in my right hand. And I'll, I'll buy one of those uh, copper gloves and put on just my right hand. And it goes away immediately. Now, I know everybody doesn't have that kind of success. Um, the, the glove I buy is on Amazon. It's called Copper Hands. Um, and it's expensive. It's $50 a pair. Um, but uh, it works for me. But I don't have that that pain during the day. I, I have the inability uh, to utilize my right hand uh, substantially. That's why you don't see me behind the prescription counter very often. Um, but um, I don't notice the pain until uh, I really uh, go home and just sit there. And, and it isn't me thinking about it. It just, uh, it really brings me out of a, uh, any kind of an event I'm in. And the pain is uh, like just jamming needles or pins or knives into my hand. Um, you know, nobody likes getting a runny nose or itchy eyes when allergies flare up. You can talk to anybody that has allergies, and uh, they all agree it, it, it's never fun. Uh, your goal is certainly to minimize uh, your reactions as much as possible. Uh, you may not realize that uh, seemingly harmless daily habits are things that uh, in your environment can make your symptoms even worse. Uh, to keep them in check, you need to learn um, what common culprits are, are not your friends when it comes to allergies. So uh, I think we've covered uh, a lot of that. Um, and some of them are very obvious and some of them aren't. And uh, we're going to be into the season. Remember, there's um, antihistamines that are uh, non-drowsy, like Claritin, and, uh, and Zyrtec and Aleve. And um, you can take those uh, in their 24 hours a day. Some of them are every 12 hours. Um, and those will help you uh, substantially. You also realize that all those antihistamines can be sold behind the counter at a pharmacy with decongestants in them. And principally, uh, that is a pseudofedrin. Uh, we just had the task force in last week from the Sheriff's Department uh, checking our uh, our logs of people that we had sold pseudofedrin to. And uh, we have all of this on a computer, so all we have to do is put a, a, um, a time range in, a date range, and we can print uh, everybody, including myself, 
uh, that uh, purchased that product over a period of a year, two years, three months, six months, and see if there's any duplications and see if when they go to the next pharmacy, uh, whether some of those same names appear uh, on their log that appears on our log. Uh, we are rather convenient because the computer program tells us how much we can sell of that drug. And so if we go to put it in for you, if you're in too soon um, and you just got a box yesterday or you got a box a week ago, uh, it will pop up in the computer and it won't allow us to sell it to you. So uh, we take your driver's license number and your signature and uh, then that's available for law enforcement whenever they need it. So um, we'll just have to... Um, You'll just have to remember that you may not need the decongestant. And you can buy it uh, over the counter uh, with a different decongestant cause, cause, uh, called phenylephrine, and, uh, and it will be uh, non-addicting and uh, will do uh, not quite as good, but it will certainly have a decongestant in it and help you. You also need to be aware about the eardrops and we've told, or uh, nose drops. We've talked to you about it before. Uh, Afrin is the brand name. Oxymetazolone is the uh, over-the-counter uh, generic name. And you will see it under neosinephrine. You'll see it under um, uh, Afrin nasal say, spray. You'll see it under um, uh, Good Neighbor Pharmacy, uh, whatever Caremark, uh, CVS Caremark's name is, or Rite Aid's and it will say oxymetazoline on it, and that will be the one that you cannot use more than three days. Uh, you will get a rebound, and it will work wonderfully to clear your nose, but you will start getting a rebound effect, so the more you use it, the more you have to use it, and uh, then you'll find out you can't get off of it. We've talked about it on this show before. Uh, it will, uh, you'll have to go to uh, a cold turkey you off of it or get uh, ocean spray or saline nasal spray and use that uh, alternatively until you no longer depend on the oxymetazoline to clear you up that you can use the saline nasal spray. You can even get it with the lubricant in it <coughs> so it will <coughs> excuse me, feel better to you as well <coughs> as um, keep you from rebounding. Well, as much as we don't want to believe it, uh, more Americans are at risk for a heart attack and stroke. And um, unfortunately, in the United States, most adults have poor cardiovascular health and people are at risk for heart attacks and stroke today. That was uh, true a generation ago. Um, black uh, adults no longer lag behind whites in cardiovascular health as much as they once did. And that's because of the worsening health among white people rather than the gains for blacks. So the study researchers examined a nationally representative survey data collected from 1988 to 2014 from U.S. adults 25 and older who didn't have a history of cardiovascular disease. So even among the youngest people in the study, ranging from 25 to 44, uh, the amount of people with optional heart health, heart health never exceeded 40% of whites, 25% uh, of Mexican-Americans, and 15% of African-Americans. The cardiovascular health of the United States started out low and has fallen uh, dramatically. Uh, Afro-Americans had lower cardiovascular health than whites uh, over the entire period, especially the younger adults. This included 21,000 white people and 10,400 African-Americans African-Americans and 4,000 Mexican-Americans and uh, that were born in the U.S. and 5,500 that were born elsewhere. Uh, all of the risk factors had heart disease and researchers examined the study uh, for causes that may be possible to that. So uh, the last survey was from 2011 to 2014. Uh, the proportion of younger African-Americans, Afro, African adults with optional heart disease was about 11 percent points lower than whites, while Mexican-Americans lagged by about 7 to 8 percent. Now, the bad part about this study was it wasn't a controlled experiment. And I, I love big studies like this, and I think they give us a lot of information. But if they aren't a double-blind study where it's controlled, 
So uh, those are designed to prove how or what certain risk factors for cardiovascular disease might be directly related to the deaths or non-fatal heart attacks or stroke. So uh, they still offer evidence that Americans have a lot of room to improve their heart health. Um, some factors contributing to the poor health for Americans may be impossible for people to control. Uh, family history, we certainly know. Uh, heart disease or uh, genetic predisposition, uh, uh, unemployment or lack of health insurance, but there's many other factors that can change, including poor diet, lack of exercise, smoking, excess weight, uh, drinking too much alcohol, getting inadequate sleep. <coughs> Paul, I don't notice if you uh, saw on uh, the internet, but Sean Penn was on uh, one of the nighttime. I saw uh, something. I didn't read it or anything. Well, he, I was, he was smoking or something. And he uh, he was on Ambien. Yeah. Which is a sleeping pill. Okay. And he had just flown. He said, "So you're on, on Ambien." I'm on Ambien. I'm and he was smoking a cigarette, and he was barely coherent. Wow. And. Uh, and he has all the money in the world, all the reasons to, um, and uh, the moderator said, you know, I wish you wouldn't smoke. Uh, that's just going to add to you being unhealthy. Well, he could have given a hoot whether or not uh, he needed to or not, as most people uh, are so uh, determined in Hollywood that what they're doing is uh, the correct thing and not to worry about it. But, um, and I noticed when I was in uh, uh, Tahiti, uh, how many people smoked. Even we had Eastern Europeans uh, that were on the, the cruise line, and they were from uh, Bosnia and, and uh, Serbia and Russia and the Ukraine and Germany. And, uh, and almost all of those, when they got off the ship, were smokers too. Uh, so we have such a... Uh, uh, a look in this country of people trying to stop smoking, uh, but that group uh, is one that uh, does whatever they want to do. And I mean, he lit up right on the stage. I've never seen anybody do that except back in the old days. When yeah, was, back in the Johnny Carson days. Yeah, or... Johnny Carson, George <laughs> Goble, and, <laughs> and uh, Dean Martin, and those guys that did it. So, um, but there are many other factors that uh, can change uh, and. Uh, I'm saying Sean Penn had those which we were talking about too much alcohol and not enough sleep. Uh, the good news is that all actions begin with lifestyle and behavior changes. And we have said uh, safe and effective medications are available when lifestyle and behavioral changes aren't enough. And those things can uh, be very effective. I just saw... Uh, yesterday where, I, I don't know if it was Shantix or which one it was that was causing um, a, a tendency to have more heart attacks and strokes. Um, a, a lot of drugs have side effects. A lot of medications that do good for people uh, do have side effects with them. And part of what I'm doing uh, when I'm evaluating these controlled substances is that going over uh, some of the things that are um, um, bad for you and you could have negative um, results from taking this medication with what you're taking. One of those is Xanax. Uh, and how bad is Xanax when you can't sleep? A lot of people get Xanax for anxiety. Uh, in the middle of the night, you uh, want to, uh, you, you have to choose whether you want to toss and turn or uh, think about all the sleep you're not getting like I did last night or make a cup of coffee or something warm and try to Sip yourself to sleep or you pop a, a Xanax because you got one when you went to the dentist or when you went to uh, flew cross country and uh, you had it left over. Well, if you're anything like the rest of us, when you go to the doctor uh, or go against the doctor, you only take one uh, for anxiety before a flight and you realize it's not going to kill you. So you realize you said, well, it's probably good to do it uh, for any time that I have any kind of anxiety. Well, that, that's probably not right. Um, it is definitely not the best option for people today. It's part of a class of drugs that we call benzodiazepines. You've heard me talk about them all day. Uh, that's along with Valium and Ativan and Clonopin. And uh, when um, uh, Ambien first came out, uh, they said the great part about this is 
that it's not a benzodiazepine. Well, it isn't, but it still has the same side effects. It doesn't get out of your system fast enough. But uh, basically, the, the Xanax calms you down and can make you sleepy, which is why some people reach for it at night. But that's kind of a roundabout way of doing things. He said uh, uh, they uh, activate receptors that don't necessarily turn off when you're ready to go to sleep. Uh, and those side effects of benzodiazepines range from temporary amnesia to being groggy and certainly reduced motor function, but nothing to mess around with. We've had several people that have taken Ambien the night before, and maybe they were having a problem with allergies, and they took a Benadryl uh, at the same time. And they got ready to go to work, and they didn't know where they were. Xanax is much worse than that. Uh, you actually may feel more tired in the morning than you would normally feel. So if you take Xanax at 2 a.m. and wake up at 7 a.m., you still got seven more hours worth of those side effects. And the bad news for getting to work on time, basically, this drug was made to treat anxiety. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the State Board of Pharmacy and the DEA says if you have somebody that's taking an opiate for chronic pain, they don't need Xanax along with it. It's not a muscle relaxant. It's a central nervous system depressant. Uh, and uh, you need to uh, not be reaching for a bottle like that when you can't sleep. And I've had many people that have done that and got addicted to it. And when you get addicted to a benzodiazepine, that is much worse than getting addicted to an opiate. Uh, it takes months to get off a benzodiazepine. Now, I'm not talking about um, cold turkey in you. I'm talking about going off it slowly. But there has to be some attempt by your uh, medical practitioner to uh, reduce the dosage that you're getting of that medication, whether it's to uh, one every other night, whether it's they're using it for sleeping pill. It should not be used for that. Um, it's fine to take once or twice a week if you haven't been drinking and uh, just try your normal dosage first. The risks are dose related. So if you take less medicine, you have uh, a lower risk of uh, a big hangover. But definitely stick to just once or twice a week. Any more and you may increase your chances of building tolerance. And that's exactly what they do. They start out at a, a quarter of a milligram, a half of a milligram, one milligram and two milligram. And uh, when you're taking two milligram, that's substantial. We, uh, one of the things we have to put in the computer when we do a uh, report on you is the morphin, uh, morphine uh, milligram equivalent to the drug you're putting in there when it comes to pain medications. So if you're taking Xanax and you're taking something else, uh, we have to translate that into how much morphine that would be <clears throat> Uh, from the opiate to add to what you're taking from the Xanax. And it would be uh, amazing. Like hydrocodone is uh, exactly the same. If you have uh, 30 milligrams of hydrocodone, it's 30 milliequivalents or 30 milligrams of uh, morphine. But as drugs get stronger, the oxycodone, the fentanyl, all those get stronger, that figure becomes much greater. Um, the takeaway on this is it's fine to take once in a while if you can get to sleep and have uh, <coughs> a leftover on hand, but don't expect to be firing on all cylinders the next morning and keep it up because there are much better options. Uh, using your sleep hygiene can help as a prescription for over-the-counter medicine, anything that makes it possible for you to go to bed relaxed and able to catch plenty of disease without turning into a zombie the next morning. Uh, I had uh, a friend of mine that had this cough going on, and he bought some NyQuil, but there is a NyQuil product called Z, and it's diphenhydramine or Benadryl. <clears throat> so he took two tablespoons of that uh, at night because he was coughing, and he was out the whole night. And uh, he's not a small individual. So there are things that you can take, and antihistamines are one of them, the ones that don't make you drowsy, uh, for uh, getting uh, extra sleep and uh, not being able to... Um, uh, build up a tolerance to uh, the drug so much is that we uh, uh, want to keep as many people from 
uh, out of the step of uh, getting addicted to these things as we can. We just got a few minutes left, and uh, um, I, I noticed this in the Mayo uh, letter. Uh, people have come to us and said, you know, I've got dark spots in my vision, and is that something to be uh, concerned about? And those are what we describe as floaters. Uh, they're black or gray specks or um, like cobwebs that typically drift around when you move your eyes and appear to dart away when you look at them directly. Uh, when I was on this cruise, uh, I got them and I kept trying to catch them. And I'd see them in my eye and then I'd see them go away. And I kept thinking, is there something out there I'm seeing or is it just those floaters? And it was those floaters. Um, people who need glasses to see distance, nearsighted, are more likely to get them. They're more common in older adults as well, uh, in people who've experienced eye trauma or inflammation inside the eye. Uh, the presence of a few of those usually really isn't a cause of concern. Uh, most are caused by age-related changes. If you're in that aging group that I'm in, uh, you just add one more to the chart, and uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. So um, if you are, if they occur as a jelly-like substance inside your eye becomes more liquid, when that happens, those tiny fibers uh, tend to clump and can cause tiny shadows in your retina. Um, although it's usually harmless and not all floaters are non-threatening, so it's a good idea to have your uh, optometrist or ophthalmologist uh, look at them and see that they're okay. Uh, if they find out they're, they're not, you need to have a specialist immediately uh, if you notice a sudden increase in one eye in particular. If you also see light dashes or flashes or lose your peripheral vision, that may signal that the retina has or is pulling away from the back of your eye. So. You don't want this detachment of a retina, which happens more often than you like to think. A retina with a hole or a tear can be successfully treated, either with laser treatment or surgery. And if left untreated, uh, full detachment can lead to vision loss in the affected eye. So you don't want to add one more thing to your uh, uh, problem of uh, having not good health. So if you see something like that, and if you see things all of a sudden that uh, uh, you hadn't seen before, uh, then uh, it's time to have somebody uh, take a look at it and, uh, and check about it. I had a, uh, uh, just yesterday, I had one of my toes. I looked down and there was black skin all over it. And I uh, pulled it off and uh, put a Band-Aid around it and uh, thought nothing more about it. And it, uh, it got worse at night. And I uh, went and uh, put it... Uh, a sock over it so it wouldn't uh, cause any damage and uh, it's more infected today. So I'm seeing my doctor uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to remind you that we're still doing immunizations. We're still delivering to every place. We'll still take those prescriptions from your pharmacy that no longer can fill your prescriptions uh, <coughs> for control substances. Uh, we are requesting that you transfer the rest of your prescriptions to us. If you can't do that, you're welcome to go someplace else. But we have to do that in order to uh, make it cost effective for us uh, to do those. So I'd like to remind you we're North Lake Medical Pharmacy with two locations for you. The 5136 Hill Road East, across from Lakeside Hospital, 263-6192. And outside the Bruno Shop Smart at 347 Lakeport Boulevard. Call us there at 263-1328. Thank you, Paul. Good to be back. Thanks, Bill. Glad to have you back. And we'll see everybody back here again next Wednesday at 10 a.m. right here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXPX Lakeport.